What's up guys, Stas here. So the stock market futures just opened up about 30 minutes ago and as of right now the S&P futures are up about 9 points, the Nasdaq up about 30 points and the Dow Jones up about 70 points. And in this video we'll break down more of the futures, kind of what the stock market did last week, but most importantly I want to go over what the game plan is for this upcoming week, what stocks, what ETFs am I watching, what am I looking to trade, and we'll break down some technicals on the market and see where could we be headed over these next couple of days. So if you guys enjoy the video, if you find any value in the video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button for me, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you want to be a further part of the Strive Smart community, there's a Discord link down below, a Facebook group link down below, so feel free to join those, they're free of charge, and I'd love to see you guys in the community community. So last week was a pretty rocky week in the market. We had a pretty stable Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday was ridiculous. We saw a cliff drop on Tuesday and then on Wednesday an even further cliff drop. But ultimately Thursday, Friday, we recovered and pretty much gained back most of that loss that occurred on Wednesday. And kind of what caused this? Well, Jerome Powell spoke last week. He had an interview and he kind of alluded to the fact that the economic damage could be long lasting. He went into some scenarios of how long term or rather how long recessions could affect economies. He went through many different examples, right? And Again, he said it would be long-lasting, the economic damage, and this kind of spooked the markets, right? Ever since then, the markets have been falling down, but again, with the massive jump Thursday, Friday, it pretty much erased the loss from Wednesday. So at this point, where could we be going in this market? Well, we're seeing the S&P hold 28.50 to 60. That's a good sign. That's telling me that we're kind of trading in a range right now on the S&P, right? If we zoom in a bit on this 30-day chart, you guys can see we're trading between about 2780, 2800 to about 2950. We've bounced back and forth, kind of like what's that? What's that game called? Um, uh, the old school, old school game where you pull it back, ping ball, kind of like that, right? We've been bouncing back, boom, boom, between 2800, 2950. So by the looks of it, and the futures being up right now, and, and you, you guys know the futures, they could sw uh, switch overnight. So you got to take them with a grain of salt at the end of the day. But with the futures being up right now, hey, there could be an opportunity for the markets to maybe fill the gap back up to 2900. 2950, right? And you can see the futures, you can see the S&P is struggling a bit under this 180 SMA here, but watch, if it breaks, we could easily fill the gap up to 2900, right? The Nasdaq up about 23 points right now again, like I said, that means we're breaking out of one of these major moving averages. That's actually a very bullish move here um, for the futures on this 30-day chart. And on the 4-hour chart, notice how 8900, 9000 on the Nasdaq, we've talked about this on the channel. This is a very strong support because it was an old resistance and the fact that we're holding it pushing up that's a good sign here for the bulls right and again anything can happen overnight for all we know we could wake up tomorrow and the futures could be red it's happened before but as of now again this is looking very good for the bulls this could be a potential cup here on the nasdaq forming right especially if big tech has a strong week next week. We'll see how it ends up going down, right? And the Dow Jones, again, up about 70 points here. You know, we're still struggling a bit on the Dow, but still, if it breaks, let's say 23,800, 24,000, that's where we could start seeing some buying in the Dow Jones. And overall at this point, guys, what's, what's kind of moving the market or what could move the market? We have some more earnings, right? That could end up moving the market, but a lot of the big earnings are behind us. But the economy reopening at this point, if this ends up being successful, we don't get a surge of second round cases. This could be the best case scenario for the stock market. Hey, we might go to 3000 on S&P 3100. Who knows? But on the flip side, let's say we get a reopening, which it's happening here across some states in the United States, right? Slowly reopening with the different phases. Let's say we get that, 
and then all of a sudden we get a massive case or second round of cases, this could end up bringing down the stock market to, to maybe even under 2200 where we were back in March. That's what some people are saying. So with all of this uncertainty, people opening up, uh, states rather opening up slowly at this point, I think it's best to be cautious in the market, guys. That's just me being honest, and I'm being honest with what I'm doing. I'm not being super aggressive with investing right now, trading. I'm being very cautious, a lot of cash, and really just nitpicking my investments, right? And you guys saw in my M1 Finance portfolio on Friday or Saturday, I'll link it down below. You know, I go over, I went over what I'm buying and it's really just safer, longer term blue chip stocks at this point. And I love to know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on the markets, stocks in general? What are you doing? Are you buying? Heck, are you selling? We've seen many 13F filings come out now with many of these big hedge funds selling, right? Uh, Warren Buffett sold all, all of his airlines. You know, we see um, Bridgewater. I, I, I'll go, um, maybe I'll make a video over the next couple of days going over the hedge funds, but we've seen Bridgewater selling out of positions and a bunch of others. So, it's an interesting time we're living in, guys. And again, I'd love to know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts? So let's get into some stocks here that I'm watching, some ETFs. And you guys know that I'm super bullish on, for one, gold at this point, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But I'm also very bullish on the video game stocks. And I think EA, Electronic Arts, is at a very uh, interesting potential breakout spot right now. Notice how over the past couple of weeks, ever since eh, about a month ago, in the middle of April, we've struggled at about 120. We tested it once, we tested it again, we tested it again, 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 pretty much five, six times we've tested 120. And the good thing here is Notice how we're actually squeezing into a wedge. You know, we're, we're seeing a bit of a resistance at 120, but we're also uptrending into a wedge at this point. So that is putting EA in an interesting spot heading into this week, right? Because if we're able to squeeze out of this wedge to the top, this stock could end up going bananas, guys. Again, Gaming stocks at this point are extremely, extremely bullish, right? Analysts are increasing price targets for many of them. And notice if we break 120, this thing has a lot of room to run. We actually dropped from 150 down to 70. That's when video games were struggling about two days, uh, two years ago. Video game stocks, that is. You can see that with the next one we'll go over as well. But just, just watch it, guys. 120 bucks. You know, notice it's a resistance from back in 2017 as well, right? This could be an, an excellent swing trade. Heck, I might even buy some tomorrow if we get the pop. So from 120 to 130, I think that is a very possible um, move here for EA. And the next one is Activision Blizzard. They, they've gone bananas, guys, up about 1.3% on Friday. And you guys notice over the past couple of weeks, the stock's gone from 60 all the way up to 75. So for me, you know, this one's a bit more overextended, I'd say, than Electronic Arts, but still, I'm very bullish on the stock. We pulled down a bit. We held the uptrend quite nicely. On Friday, we popped above roughly 74 bucks, which is a resistance, so this means we could be heading up now to about 76 bucks. And again, back on that three-year chart, video game stocks were struggling like crazy two years ago. You guys remember, this one went from 85 all the way down to $40, guys. And this has honestly been a stock that... I haven't traded in a while, but I actually traded a lot during this time period. So overall, I think video game stocks, uh, you know, th there's a lot of potential there over these next couple of weeks. And a company tomorrow, arguably one of the most hyped YouTube stocks here in the community, the YouTube stock community recently, it's Nordic American Tankers, ticker symbol NAT. This is actually a company that's reporting earnings in the morning. So guys, be careful, um, or rather be mindful, because this could be a very volatile stock tomorrow. And let me let me double check. Is it tomorrow morning? Well, it'll tell us right here. 
it, oh, that's weird. On Thinkorswim, it says earnings 518, which is tomorrow, but it says unspecified time. But I did see somewhere that it's in the morning. We'll, we'll, we'll see, guys. I'll, I'll do some more. Uh, I'll double check that after the video, but we'll see. But overall, this stock, and by the way, it's an oil tanker stock, if you guys didn't know that. Oil tankers are pretty much big ships that carry oil on them. That's the gist of it. And at this point, with the overproduction of oil, and the oversupply and the lack of storage places to put oil, these tankers are making a killing, right? Because the airlines aren't using oil, ships aren't using oil, a lot of other businesses aren't using oil. There's nowhere to put the oil, so this this tanker stock, many tanker stocks, they're, they're benefiting right now. And notice how we're at a pretty technical spot here, guys, on the four-hour chart at about five bucks, right? Old resistance from back in October, back in the beginning of 2020, back towards the end of March, right? Five bucks needs to hold for this to run up. And especially if we break out of 556 bucks, watch out above, especially if they report a good earnings with that technical break. This could be huge. And on top of that, let me double check this on Yahoo Finance, but they pay a pretty juicy dividend. You guys can see they're paying a dividend here on, uh, what is this, the 14th or probably the 22nd of this month. And that dividend, for my memory, it's, it's over 10%. Yeah, it's about 11% here according to Yahoo Finance. So this could also be a short-term dividend play maybe for the next couple of months as this business could continue uh, to prosper with the, coil, uh, with the current situation of oil. So watch five bucks, watch the earnings report, guys. But the one risky thing is if they don't even, or let's say they don't, come up to the expectations. Let's say they fall a bit short to the expectations of the earnings. That could bring the stock down. But if they blow earnings out the park, this could run up 30-40% in a day. We've seen it happen before. You guys can see it. Excuse me, this happened about uh, about two, three weeks ago, it went from about five bucks to about nine bucks. So keep an eye on Nordic American tankers for tomorrow. Facebook is another stock here that I'm watching. Um, I'm really liking the way it held 200 bucks previous support from back in the beginning of this month. And now we're kind of range bound. We're in this range between 200 and about 215. So I'm thinking, Maybe from 210 to 215, we could catch a move on Facebook, right, of about 2.5%. Maybe we pull down a bit, retest 208. Maybe we could get an entry 208 up to about 215 there. And looking back to, let's say, the three-year chart on Facebook, notice how 225 is the all-time high. So if we break 210 or we already are at 210, but let's say we break 215, 225 could be in the distance in the short term, especially, guys, if the economy reopening goes smooth, right? We don't get a resurgence of cases. You know, of course, the Fed printing the money, all that good stuff. If we continue rolling in this direction in the short term, I can, I can easily see Facebook up 220 or above, right? And another one that's kind of range-bound, like Facebook, is Nike, ticker symbol NKE. And on this 20-day chart, probably on the 30-day chart, you'll be able to see it a bit better. Notice how we're holding 85 bucks rock solid. That's a rock solid support from the beginning of April up until now, with the resistance being one of them being at about 88 bucks and the next one at about 91 to about $92. So at this point, guys, there is a decent move, maybe up to about a uh, decent potential here for a move up to maybe 88, 90 bucks. That could be the first move. And then from there, if the uh, range continues, maybe up another 2.5% to 90 to 91, $92. So watch Nike. I'm really liking the way it held um, 85 bucks. And in my eyes, guys, if the market stays green, you know, this is a pretty low risk trade. I, I really believe um, it's a pretty low risk trade here. And I got some, inf uh, I got an, actually an inquiry for a stock. And if you guys actually want me to talk about stocks on this, uh, you know, on this channel, feel free to just comment down below. Do not be shy if you want me to break down uh, a ticker symbol in the video. But I got qu uh, asked a question, you know, what's your thoughts on Boeing stocks? And I've kind of already gone over it, but hey, I'll go over it again. I'm not extremely bullish here um, in the short term, right? Especially because we broke that wedge. Notice how we broke that wedge here, technically speaking, right? We're still moving under the main moving averages on the four-hour chart. We actually just hit 
a lower low this past week in the stock. And on top of that, we got some bad news about the 737 MAX. They suspended about 108 um, orders in, in the month of April. It was just a bad quarter um, for Boeing, right? They have a bunch of problems right now with management. The earnings were just terrible. So for a long-term investment, do I see Boeing bouncing back eventually? Yeah, probably within the next I'm not putting a time limit on it, but 5, 10 years from now, I think Boeing will be back. But in the short term, to trade it, I'm really not a fan unless we somehow break out of this downtrend, right? If we can squeeze back into the 120s, um, you know, 130s, heck, 140s, that could be a good opportunity. But my gut's telling me stay away from Boeing. You know, there's more downside here in the short term. There could be more downside. That's just what my gut says. And and, and I tend not to go against my gut. Um, it, it served me right in the past, and I'm sure it will continue to serve me right most of the time here. Of course, I'm wrong sometimes, guys, but most of the time, it could serve me right here in the future. And the next stock I want to go over is Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. And there's been a lot going on with Tesla, Elon Musk, the state of California. Um, they're, 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 they're giving him trouble about opening up his factory, right? He employs what, like 35,000, 40,000 people over there in California. Now, Elon's actually threatening. He said he's going to move either to Nevada or Texas or something like that, move his headquarters there. So there's a lot going on right now with Elon Tesla headquarters, the state of California. There's just a lot of craziness, right? And in terms of the stock, it hasn't really done much to the stock, right? The stock's kind of just been coasting this past week, you know, between 790, 840, you know, 760. This is normal movement at the end of the day um, for Tesla stock. But ultimately, I would like to see a break back up towards 800, 810, 815, right? I want to see some upwards push here um, to ultimately build a position because Tesla, I think... It, it maybe it won't offer a great swing trade right now, but intraday, an intraday opportunity, it could definitely serve that because we all know Tesla's very volatile. It's one of those stocks that's up and down, up and down, and that obviously opens up a lot of opportunities for day traders. So watch Tesla on the spike here above 800. We could fill maybe the 820 and above, um, could go up to let's say 850, 860. I can definitely see that as being an opportunity there. And Shopify. You know, there's a couple stocks here, guys, that I think are just insanely overvalued. Shopify is one of them. I think Shopify needs to come down a bit um, to, let's say, technically speaking here, if we're looking at the charts, what I would think is is a healthy pull down, probably 670, um, 660. At this point, I would consider building a position here um, in Shopify. Another one that's it's shooting up like crazy, probably not as overvalued as Shopify, but still it's, it's doubled about two, two X it's doubled almost in the past couple of weeks alone, guys, you know, ever since the bottom back in March. So for NVIDIA here, I'd love to see an entry point maybe at about 320, 315 if we're able to pull down there. And Virgin Galactic is another stock that I'm watching here, ticker symbol SPCE. Although this one did break its uptrend, I think there is um, potential here at the end of the day, guys. This is one of those spec stocks that I think Long term is a decent spec play, right? You know, space travel, human space travel, you know, supersonic travel. That's kind of the long term goal here for Virgin Galactic. And as a, as a trade, I think there is potential, but we have to get back up at this point above sixteen dollars, sixteen fifty, um, in my personal opinion. And like I said earlier, I'm very bullish on gold stocks, um, gold in general. Did I cancel out gold in my indexes watch list? Let me add that back. Um, we can see gold. Gold right now, futures are up about two points. I made some good money last week on GDX. This is kind of my go-to gold ETF, but I actually took profits on Friday, right? So at this point, I'd like to see a pull down maybe to about $35, $35.50. And I'd love to get even lower than that, maybe even $34, guys, right? And, and at that point, I'd definitely load the boat on a swing trade um, for this gold miners ETF. And some gold stocks I'm watching, some individual stocks, you know, Franco Nevada, very bullish there. You know, Newmont Corporation, that's another good one that I like. And gold, ticker symbol G-O-L-D, this is Barrick Gold. 
And GLD, if you want to have an ETF, trade an ETF that tracks the price of gold, let's say you don't have gold at your house, let's say you don't have bullion, you don't have a coin, a bar, whatever, you can actually trade GLD. It just literally tracks the price of gold, um, and, and, and that way you can get exposure to it if you want. So overall, guys, that's pretty much it. Some thoughts on the market, where we could be headed here, some stocks, some ETFs I'm watching. So I hope you did find value in the video. If you did, like always, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Maybe consider subscribing, just maybe, if you want to see further content like this. And if you guys actually want two free stocks from Weebly, bull with one of them valued up to $1,400. Check out the link down below in the description box. All you have to do is put in $100 into the account and you get those two free stocks. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always, stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.